What's good, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Smoking and Grilling with me, A.V. Now, you read that title, listen, and you know it's gonna be easy, right? I'm gonna get ready to show you guys just how easy it is just to make some stuffed pork chops. Listen, I don't wanna over talk it. I'm gonna show you these limited amount of ingredients. And listen, I got a bonus for you. I brine these chops. That's gonna be the secret to coming up with some, you know, like a fail-proof, juicy chop. So, let's go over these ingredients and let's just make this happen. Okay, so here we go. Not a whole lot of ingredients, right? So I'm gonna just start off by showing you guys, look, we got cream cheese, we're gonna use about half of this. This is eight ounces, so we're gonna use four of that. Then I got thick uh, thick sliced bacon. We're gonna use four of these. We got green onions, Parmesan, uh, shredded Parmesan cheese. And this right here, look at my three spices, that's kosher salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. And then of course, listen, we're gonna fry them and put that little color on these chops, right? We're gonna have a little flour. So we're gonna add this to that, and that's how that's gonna happen. Now, you can look right here. Look, this is a little bonus. Like I said, look, I brined. I'm gonna give you guys everything you need to know about the brine and how to make it super simple. It wasn't even worth me really showing it unless you guys tell me you want me to just show how I made this pork brine. But I brined it overnight. These are my chops. So now let's just go ahead and let's go ahead and start, you know, to assemble. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is, we're gonna like multitask, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna get our bacon. We're gonna start going ahead and getting this cooked. Now, as my bacon is cooking, now we're gonna go ahead and get our stuffing, right? So we're gonna get ready and get, get ready and get our uh, cream cheese, you know, cut our green onions and go from there. Now here I'm just showing you that I've used just the green part of the green onions. You know, you can see the size of the slices. This really up to you, but I like that size that you see right there. Okay, got my bacon going, right? Now I'm getting ready to start doing my cream cheese, you know, like my, my filling, right? So this will be a great time for us to go ahead and preheat our oven to 400 degrees. Now, let's go ahead and start on this cream cheese. Now, like I stated earlier, look, this is like eight ounces, right? So obviously we're gonna take four. We just cut this in half. I mean, you, ain't, you don't have to be like super perfect, you know? And then you want it to be room temperature. If I didn't say that, look, that's key because that's gonna help us when it comes time to mix. Now, remember our green onions? Look, we're gonna add these. I'm just gonna add just a little bit and we'll add some more. I'm gonna do the same thing with the grated Parmesan, you know, cheese. And then of course, we wanna add some of this garlic powder, right? Now, go ahead and get yourself a whisk. And then when you have it at room temperature, just notice how easy it is to just incorporate and mix. It's gonna be tricky. You know what I mean? But we just gonna keep moving it around. And when you use a whisk, you see how it goes inside like this? Listen, we just gotta get through it, you know? Now I got a couple of chops that are gonna be nice. Just wait till I take it out of this brine so you guys can take a look at it. Now I'll start adding some more. You can just add the rest. I just wanted, like I say, I like to do everything, you know, in increments, just so that, you know what I mean? So I don't put too much or it's too hard to, you know, mix or whatever. But actually, this was perfect. The cream cheese was at the right temperature. And we'll just keep moving this around like this until we get it, you know, incorporated. You kind of like want to like mash it together. It'll blump up like this, but if you guys want to use a fork, you can do that too. Okay, so just tap it a few times. Everything should come out outside of your whisk. Then you want to get yourself, you know, like a, a rubber spatula. You get everything off the sides. Just work it towards the middle. You know what I mean? That way you can get all your ingredients because this is what we're going to use to stuff with. Now, you guys can see just how far I went with my bacon. I just want it crispy enough so that I can, you know, break it easily with my hand. And don't forget, we're putting this back into the oven, so super crispy is no good. I saved one back, right? Because just looking at this right here, let me break that one. I don't know. This might just be enough. You know what I mean? Just using just three, you know, three crumbled pieces of bacon. But let's get it all mixed up see how we like it, make sure that we can see it throughout. Cause when we slice that pork chop and we add these, you know, add, you know, and then when you get a, that pork chop and you get some of this, that melted Parmesan and that, that bacon, ah yeah, you can see I can barely talk. So I like the way it look right here. I think that's enough. If you want to add more, you can, but, and listen, you put too much stuff in, inside, it's going to make a mess. You know what I mean? So this is enough for these beautiful pork chops that I got. So I'm finna go ahead and take this one here, put this in between some bread, you know, some soft bread, a uh, little mayo. I'm finna have me a little bacon sandwich. Now, what I did was, 
I'm taking my pork chops out of my brine, right? So I just put a, you know, a couple of layers of paper towels on the bottom. You know, once I get them on top of that, then I take another paper towel and I just start to pat them dry. Okay, so after you get them patted dry, right? You wanna make sure you got yourself a sharp blade. Now, the bone is back here. And here we gonna use it as a stop. So about halfway through it, right? So what we wanna do is we just wanna go and we wanna work with the tip. We wanna come in here cause we wanna fill this cavity up, you know, with our stuffing, right? So then we'll just move it like this. And you should, if you take your time, when you go in and you push, you'll feel the tip of the knife hitting the back of the bone, protecting your hand. Real easy, nice and safe. And if it's sharp, look, you just bring it around. I don't want to cut it too much, because you know what? We don't want to like ooze all of our cream cheese. But check it out, we just go like this. But we want to make sure that we getting down to that bone, that way we can get some filling in there. Now, I like that. Let me just show you now. When you open it up, it should look just like that. All right, so go ahead, take your flour. And then you remember your dry seasonings. We're just gonna go ahead and add that. Got myself another whisk. And what I'm doing is, I'm just whisking it, making sure it's evenly distributed throughout the flour, right? Now, got that done. Now you wanna get yourself, you know, something flat. For me, I'ma use this saucer. This will be just fine. And I have other pork chops which you guys don't see, but this right now, I'm just gonna put something like this. And we'll start with that, All right? And so this is gonna be the station when I go ahead and flour both sides of the pork chops. You just saw me set up everything so that we can bread, right? So we can put our flour on. But the thing is, we gotta stuff it. If you stuff it now, you don't get all it, you don't have to mess your coating up. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take some. We'll take it like this, so you guys can see. You just open it up, and you just wanna push it in there just like you see right there. Now that's up to you how much you put in there, but I can promise you, you put too much in here, it becomes way too much and it'll start oozing out. And you kinda like want it to stay flat, so. This right here is good. You guys can see that? That's fine. I'll just close like that. And then also, you can get yourself a toothpick and put maybe three toothpicks just to close it up. Now I'll do the next one so you guys can see it again. And then right now it should be coming like self-explanatory. You know what we finna do next. We finna go ahead and hit it with that flour. You know what I mean? You put that color on there, and then we're gonna put it in the oven. Okay, so both of these are stuffed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this one. And what we're gonna do is we just put it right there on top like that. You know what I mean? Uh, then listen, you don't wanna like mash it down too much because you don't wanna push none of your stuffing out, right? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over, right? Just like you see. Now once you got it coated, you wanna make sure your grease is up to temp. Now I used a medium high heat, right? That's what we are gonna sear with. So then go ahead, just set it in there. Be careful that you don't get any splash on yourself. And then what I'm doing now is, you just take the remainder. It depends on how big of a pan you have or whatever. So you just wanna coat that one and then put that in there also, just like you see right there. Now, this only takes about two and a half to three minutes, right? So I got myself a spoon that helped me, you know, keep them from flipping over. What I'm doing is looking at the bottom. Once I achieve the color that I'm looking for, that right there, and then I just flip them over. Remember, two and a half to three minutes. Okay, it's been three minutes. I checked the color on the bottom. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Our oven is up to 400 degrees. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put it in. Listen, we're gonna put it in and we're gonna look for an internal temp. On the meat side, we're looking for about 145 degrees, right? Now, after when they come out, look, you can see right now that some of the, you know, our stuffing kind of oozed out. This is where the toothpicks would help, you know, greatly keep that stuffing in the inside. All right, so now you just want to go ahead and, you know, plate. I'm going to be serving these with some mashed potatoes. You can see that, you know, you can see the stuffing, how it started oozing out. And I'm just going to go ahead and just put it here. And then I'll just let it slide down. Maybe like mash it in like this a little bit. 
Now, I want you guys to take a look at this part right here. I'm getting ready to cut it. You can just see how tender it is and how juicy it is. And then with that garlic parmesan stuffing in the inside, oh man, this right here makes for it. A delicious, you know, the fork full, along with that mashed potatoes. Yeah, I want you guys to let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Now tell me what you guys think about this one here. I got it, listen, when we brown it, you know, we put that, that, uh, that ooey, you know, we get that flavor from the uh, cast iron skillet, right? It might not look the prettiest, but I promise you, you just saw when I cut into it right there, just how juicy it is. Hey, listen, that's the key. You guys gotta start brining your meat. Listen, it's a fail-proof method as long as you don't overcook. Hey, so with that being said, listen, you just saw me cut me a piece. I'm gonna go in for my second piece. This time, let me do it like this, cause I got, check this out. I got a nice big piece right here. Mm. Hold on now. You wanna talk about like an explosion of flavor in your mouth? This is it right here. So, give this a chance, you guys. Don't like smother it with like no gravy or nothing like that. Listen, we took the time to go ahead and brine. We did that. That ensured that it stayed juicy, right? And then we hit it with that cream cheese, that bacon, you know what? And then we put them green onion, you know, that top on there and, and that garlic powder too. Hey, that right there sends it right over the top. It's perfect. It doesn't need nothing else. And just the fact that we brine mean we don't need none of that gravy to like smother to keep it juicy or nothing like that. Just trust it. Don't forget to temp your meat. We looking for 145 all the way up to 150. We good. That right there will tell you when you cut into it, listen, it's gonna just run out of there. Hey, so with that being said, hey, listen, if you're new to my channel, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And with that being said, you guys, for those of you guys been watching me for a minute, you know what I'm about to say. I'm out of here. Peace.